morning, everyone. My name is Carmela D. Escaño, and our topic for today is all about exercise program. Our main objective is for you to prepare an exercise program. What is an exercise program? An exercise program is a planned activity detailing a range of physical exercises where it is typically tailored to an individual's needs. Have you had your exercise program during the quarantine? If yes, what part of the body do you focus on having this exercise program? Very good, that's right. Some of you focuses on their arms, some of you focuses on their legs, on their cardio, and so on. Remember that there are the points to keep in mind when you are designing your own exercise program. The first one is a goal or aim. You must have a goal or objective while you are doing that exercise program. Second, have a maximum heart rate and target heart rate. So you must get the maximum heart rate after doing an exercise. Why? Remember that when you are doing an exercise, you are asked first to get your resting heart rate. And after doing the exercise, you are asked to get your maximum heart rate. Why? Because some of the people who are doing their exercise might not notice that they are having a heart attack. And the third one, apply the principles of training. What is the principles of training? The principles of training are the rules when you are doing the exercise. And the fourth one, plan a training session. Are you going to do that exercise every day, once a week, twice a month? That is your training session. And the last one is an exercise log to monitor your progress. You must track the changes in your body while doing that exercise. There are also health benefits of exercise program. Actually, these are the things that the most athletes want to achieve. First, to improve their condition of heart and lungs, increase muscular strength, endurance, and motor fitness, improved muscle tone and strength, weight management, better coordination, agility, and flexibility, improved balance and spatial awareness, increased energy levels, reduced risk of chronic disease such as type 2 diabetes and heart disease, improved sleep and brain health, improved general and psychological well-being. Most of these are part of your holistic health. There is also a smart guide to goal setting. When we say smart, it means specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, trackable. When we say specific, you must write down what you want to achieve or your goal. Measurable, write down amounts, times, days, and other measures factors. You must write how many times do you want to do this exercise? And achievable, your goal should be realistic. It, is, it must be possible for you to achieve. Relevant, your goal should be important to you. Why do you want to do that? Is it beneficial to your health? Trackable, recording your progress helps you see what you have achieved. So it means that you need to have a monitor log for the changes of your body while doing that exercise program. We have also short-term goal and long-term goal. When we say short-term goal, it should be developed with a finite amount of time in mind. For example, a 15-year boy is aiming to improve his road running time over 3 kilometers by 5 seconds each week. So his target is to have or to improve his running for five seconds each week so a week is just a short time next long-term goal it is something you want to do further in the future long-term goals require time and planning 
Example, a girl is aiming to be running a total distance of 8 kilometers by the end of the school year. When we say by the end of the school year, it will take about 10 months. So in order to achieve this goal, it will took her around or about 10 months before she can see the results of his exercise or her exercise. Let's have an activity. The title of this activity is Ready, Set, Goals. Our objective is for you to set specific goals and components that need to be improved. You will need notebook and pen for recording. And remember that this is our daily, our daily routine. You need to obtain your resting heart rate. So let me show you the video on how you can get your resting heart rate. Watch and learn. When you're taking resting heart rate, you want to do, have this be the first test so that they're relaxed after they filled out the paperwork. So you do it on their right arm and you find the radial artery, which is the radial side is the thumb side and you press your two fingers, not your thumb because that's your own pulse. Press it hard enough so that you can find their pulse. And make sure once you have it, then you use your stopwatch and you go for 15 seconds and you count how many beats in those 15 seconds. Multiply that by four and that's the resting heart rate. On the radial side, find the radial artery Press in with your forefinger and middle finger until you can find the pulse. Okay, class, get now your resting heart rate. You must have a stopwatch or you can use your phone and having a stopwatch and then use your two fingers two fingers your left on your left hand and then on your right hand find the radial artery radial artery and then count the pulse for 15 seconds and then multiply multiply it by four after multiplying it by four, you have to record it on your notebook and label it with resting heart rate. Okay, do that for 15 seconds. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Stop, multiply it by four, and write it down on your notebook. Okay, that is your resting heart rate. Next, let's get your maximum heart rate. You have to subtract your age from 220. For example, 220 minus 13, that will be 200. Seven. So 207 is your maximum heart rate. Very good. Okay, let's continue. Okay, everyone, please stand up. Let's have a warm up. Let's do a 10 minute slow jog. Are you ready, class? Okay, at your place, let's do a 10-minute slow jog. Please follow the instructor on the video on having a warm-up. Hey Killer Bees, it's Paula B from PaulaBFitness.com and this is the Hot 100. You guys, we are going for a run today. No timer, no intervals, nothing fancy, just a run. Or walk, or jog, whatever pace you want. I've got a warm up for you here on screen or there's a link in the description below. When you're ready, you know I'm ready for this one. Let's go.
All right, you guys, we are going to get right to it. As promised, we are running today, so let's start running. You guys, I'm going to take this at kind of an easy pace today because I am talking. I have already warmed up. Hopefully, you did also, but you are always welcome in any of my walking, jogging, running videos to take this at whatever pace feels comfortable for you. I happen to know I've been running for, oh my gosh, I've been running for almost 11 years. This is so exciting. I'm coming up on my run anniversary on the 14th of September 2006. Wow, that sounds like it was a really long time ago, was the very first time that I ever ran. I had been walking for a really long time before that. I had been working on walk and run intervals for, I, you know, I actually don't remember the first day that I tried like that first hundred steps of running. So I honestly don't know how long I had been doing the intervals for, but I know that the first time I ran an entire mile without stopping, which ended up not actually being an entire mile because I made it later, but at the time, I thought it was an entire mile without stopping was September 4th, 2006. Gosh, that was a really long time ago. So anyways, I have learned in those 11 years, well, I've learned lots of things about running in those 11 years, but most of what I have learned is that if you just start off easy, everything takes care of itself. By the end of the run, I... Okay, I was going to say always. I don't always feel better. I 99.7% of the time feel better while I'm running during the run towards the end of the run. And I almost always finish up feeling fantastic. And that, you know, is kind of a metaphor for life. I was actually thinking about this. One of the things that I did, not intentionally because of the run anniversary, but for a lot of reasons, I put on this skirt today. So this skirt was the very very first skirt that I ever bought. And if you know, if you better run the Paula B Fitness channel, you might have heard me talk about being a skirt sports ambassador. That's why I'm wearing my skirt sports ambassador tank top today too. So this was the very first skirt that I ever bought. And in fact, it was one of the first real pieces of clothing that I bought for myself once I started feeling like a real runner. I had already been running for quite some time and I had let myself like buy a nice pair of shoes. I had let myself buy like some runner-ish things. Mostly I shopped at Target, not that there's anything wrong with Target, but but those were those were less expensive pieces and not necessarily great for running in a way that running specific clothing is. And again, this was 11 years ago, so Target had like like three choices for athletic gear. You know, they've got a great section there now. I actually still shop at Target for a lot of my stuff, but at the time, you know, they had like a couple pairs of shorts, and that was kind of it. So, so when I bought this, it was kind of like it was kind of like the first time that I really felt like myself. Now, I am not, I'm not a super girly girl in any sense. I used to be a little bit more when I was younger. I would wear skirts like a lot more often. Since I had kids, it's just, you know, things change. So, so I don't wear skirts as often as I used to. But putting this on, I felt, I felt like me. I felt young. I felt free. I felt different somehow. And it didn't magically make me run faster, unfortunately, but it made me feel different. And I tell you what, I wore this skirt for years. I have so many pictures, like every race day ever. For years, this was the only thing I would wear. I considered it my lucky skirt. I still do in a lot of ways. I just don't wear it as often anymore because I have so many other ones. I mean, I think, I think we all kind of start off wearing black. <laughs> you know, we feel like, like it'll hide a few things, you know, and then we start slowly but then we branch out. And I was actually kind of thinking, one of the reasons I chose this today, I was thinking about where we started with the Hot 100. You know, we're on day 98. You guys, 98 days in a row of this. And I was thinking about where I started with that. And I will tell you, this has been nothing short of life-changing for me. I don't know what it's been like for you, I'm assuming based on a lot of the comments that I've seen on Facebook and Instagram and everything, that you're kind of feeling the same way. And it's, I just wanted to take a little bit of time today to go for a run and to, to talk about where we've been and where we're going and how we're gonna get there. Because for me, this skirt reminds me of when I first started running. It reminds me of when I first started thinking of myself as athletic, thinking of myself as fit. And at the same time, still feeling like myself. 
this skirt, I mean, not to put too much on it, but, but when I put this on, I felt like myself. And that's kind of something that has happened to me during this Hot 100. You know, I've been on YouTube for years. I mean, literally years, almost as long as I've been running. <laughs> I've been on YouTube for four years now. And there were, I mean, the first couple of years, honestly, I wasn't like super, super into it. I was doing other things. I was still doing personal training in home. I was still doing a boot camp. I had a lot of other things going on. But I've been really focused on it for about the last two years. And I still always feel felt like, well, not quite like myself, I guess is how I'm going to phrase this. I felt like, like I was giving it a lot. I mean, hopefully you've enjoyed the workouts. If you are not brand new here, if you've done other Paula B workouts, hopefully you've seen that, you know, I've put myself into it. I smile, I laugh, I tell jokes. But something about being visible every single day for a hundred days really helped me let go of a lot. <laughs> really, to be honest, a lot of it was really about, you know, there's no time for me to overthink this. There's no time for me to hold myself back. I had to be creative. I had to do new things. And I was excited. I was ready for that. I was ready to put on a skirt. I was ready to put on a skirt and feel like me. I've been ready to wear more colors. I've been ready to be more than I have been. And I hope, I hope that that's how the Hot 100 has felt for you too. I hope that doing 100 days in a row has been life changing for you. I hope that you have realized that you can do anything. I mean, we're sitting here running right now. Were you doing that 100 or 98 days ago? Maybe you were. But were you, were you confident in it? Were you thinking, oh yeah, great, it's a running video, let's go. Or were you kind of hesitant? Did you pick and choose? You know, that's, that's what the past hundred days have brought out for me. That there's, there's nothing holding you back. There doesn't need to be anything that doesn't make you feel like yourself. And being fit, it's important to still feel like yourself. You know, that's one of the reasons why we kind of hold ourselves back from being really consistent or from finally losing that last 10 pounds is that unconsciously, we kind of worry that it won't still be us. You know, skinny people, fill in the blank. Skinny people act like this. Skinny people do such and such. People who run are, you know, jerks or they all have to run marathons or, or whatever. You can be any kind of fit person you want to be. Any kind. You could be a fit person, if you're like me, who still eats sugar. <laughs> you could be a fit person who is still nice. You can be a fit person who doesn't post on Facebook every time you do a, do a workout. You can be any kind of fit that fits you. Isn't it exciting that you can be yourself? You don't have to fundamentally change who you are to be thinner, fitter, better, more athletic, to be the kind of person who maybe prioritizes working out over other things. You can do that and still be caring, still be loving, still be a good wife or husband, still be a good mom or dad, still be a volunteer, still go to work, still have a goofy sense of humor, still love to watch TV, still enjoy taking naps on the weekend. You can do all of those things, any of those things, still be you and be fit. That's kind of exciting when you realize that, isn't it? That you can just be you. You can be you and be a runner, <laughs> for one thing. Because you guys, I don't know if you've noticed, but we're, uh, we're cruising on in to just about 10 minutes already. You guys, this Hot 100, it's been life-changing in a lot of ways. But hopefully, you are also <laughs> playing along with the contest. You know, there is a contest and a giveaway at the end of the summer, which I'm already feeling it's like kind of the end of the summer. My kids have gone back to school. 
But the end of actual summer, a little bit after Labor Day, there's an actual giveaway for one lucky person who has tagged me at Paula B Fitness on Instagram. There's a link in the description that tells you everything you could possibly need to know about the Hot 100 contest. And I will tell you, I've actually heard from a lot of people who have started a little bit later, who didn't do you know, the live version of the Hot 100, but have started a month or even two months afterwards. And I want you to know that even without the contest, that I hope that you're enjoying the Hot 100 too. You know, it's not just about winning. It's about, well, it's not just about winning the contest, but it is about winning. <laughs> it's about winning at life, being awesome, being yourself, evolving, changing, seeing progress, doing all kinds of things that you never thought that you could do before. And I am super, super proud and just so honored to be part of this with you, to be along for the ride, along for your ride, while you've learned the things that you've learned over the past almost 100 days. We are done, you guys. Hopefully, you're gonna do another workout, either to cool down or do the finisher that's here for you on screen, Ooh, or something to bring your heart rate down. Thank you so, so much for working out with me today and every day. I'll see you next time. Well done, you're already warmed up. You are done with a 10 minute slow jog. Let's proceed now on our next video. It is about dynamic stretching. You will learn here how to do a, a lunge, backward lunge and a front lunge. Hey, I'm Layla and I'm gonna show you how to do the lunge. So for the lunge, you're gonna start off with one leg in front, the other leg behind. Make sure you have enough space in between your legs um, so that one leg is not on top of the other so that you have enough stability as you lunge down and up. You're going to lunge straight down. Your shoulders are rolled back. Your chest is up. Your abs are tight. You're going to keep the weight in that front heel and you're just going to lunge straight down, dropping that back knee to the floor, almost touching the floor, and then standing right back up. So you're just going to take it straight down and up. Straight down and up. So this exercise focuses on both legs at the same time. Uh, the leg that's in front, you're really gonna feel this in that glute hamstring area. And the leg that's behind, as you come down, you're gonna feel that in the quad area. Um, you can also do a, um, add a little movement to your lunge. So instead of just staying in place, you can do a forward lunge. Um, where you just step one foot forward and then come straight down in your lunge, then take it back to that starting position. So forward lunge, you would just bring it all the way out into your lunge, making sure the knees align with the ankle on the front side, the weight is loaded in that heel on the front leg, and then you're sitting straight down in that lunge, shoulders back, chest up, abs tight, and then you take it back. So you can alternate both legs this way. You can also do a backward lunge, which is another uh, lunge with some movement. So instead of moving forward, you're just gonna move backward, starting in your starting position. You're gonna take one leg and just step it back behind you. Just like that. So you have a few different options with, that, with the lunge. You can do just um, the stable lunge, just staying in your lunging position and just taking it down and up. You could do the forward lunge or you could do the backward lunge. And the lunges with the movement, the forward, uh, forward lunge and the backward lunge are gonna give you more of that cardio burn, uh, cardio aspect, calorie burning effect um, since you're moving your body more than in your stable lunge. Very good class, that is how you do a dynamic stretching, which is the backward lunge or the forward lunge. Let's do some stretching for about a minute. And actually class, this exercise program focuses on cardiovascular endurance. So it, may, it will improve your cardiovascular endurance after doing this exercise program okay so let me time you up uh, let's time 
one minute and do a backward lunge or forward lunge. It's up to you if you want a forward or backward. Okay, so the time starts now. Okay, forward lunge. Backward, forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward, forward. They're already done with 30 seconds. Let's continue. Backward, forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Very good. Okay, let's continue. Next is high knees. High knees, actually, you're already familiar with this, but may not also. But this is how we do a high knees. High knees, jog in place, and imaginary jump rope are three cardio exercises that tone the lower body and strengthen the heart and lungs. For high knees, place your hands at hip height. Bring your thighs up to touch your hands as if jogging through hot lava. Keep your upper body erect and avoid rounding your back. For jog in place, pump your arms by your sides. Slightly lift your opposite foot as your opposite elbow comes forward. Make high impact transitions, meaning have a moment of flight between the right foot landing on the ground and the left foot landing on the ground. For imaginary jump rope, hold your fists out to the sides with elbows digging in towards your rib cage. Circle your wrists, but keep your elbows and shoulders steady. Continuously bounce your feet off of the ground, landing lightly on your toes each time. Stretch your calves when finished. This has been high knees, jog in place, and imaginary jump rope. Very good. Okay, so let's do a high knees for about a minute let's start okay everyone do a high knees all right we are done with Thirty seconds. Continue. You can do that, class. Almost there. Fifteen seconds left. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. One. Okay, time's up. Very good. Next is karaoke. Karaoke class is also just like dancing. If you love to dance, you are actually doing this exercise while you are dancing. So let's watch the video on how we do or perform karaoke. Next up is going to be karaoke. It's a, it's a side karaoke. I want the athlete to focus on their hips turning left to right, swiveling the hips. So their hips should face me, face away from me, face me, face away from me. And then we're going to do a foot fire karaoke. Uh, again, athletes are going to struggle a little bit more coordination wise with this, but it's going to teach that proprioceptive feedback and getting their feet moving. Going as many foot contacts as you can as they transverse from one side to the other. And then a nice smooth swaying karaoke where they're going to take long steps and use their arms and use their arms to give some counter force uh, on their lower body. Get a little bit of lumbar spine warm up there happening. And that's how 
allow you to create karaoke. Let's do a karaoke for a minute. Okay, you have to face me, face away, face me, face away while doing that class. You have to swing your arm. Okay, we're done with 10 seconds. Let's continue. Face me, face away. Move your arms along with your feet. Okay, face me, face away. Face me, face away. And then move your arms. Sway it to the left and to the right. Okay, you are done with 30 seconds. Let's continue. Okay. Face me, face away. Swing your hands, swing your hand to the left swing your hand to the left to the right face me face away okay are you enjoying it you are done with 50 seconds okay let's count down five four three two one one okay that's enough so we've already done with our exercise program to improve your cardiovascular endurance. So the first thing that we need to do is to warm up. And then by warming up, you can have a 10-minute jog on your place. And then do a dynamic stretching. And after dynamic stretching, you have to have high knees and then carry yoga. Okay? Very good class. I know that you are tired, but we have an activity. Here's how you will work individually. Based on the results of your fitness test, you have to choose three components that you consider as your weakness. And then follow the chart below by filling in all the necessary information needed. This is the example chart. Your component, your goal, and then the activities that you need to do to achieve your goals. Example, the one that we did earlier is a cardiovascular endurance. And our main goal for that exercise program is for you to increase your cardiovascular endurance. And you, what you did on that program is you jog and then you can also step up or high knees. For that class, you, you are going to fill in this chart with the things that you want to improve with your body or with your health. And then you have to write your goal. And then what activities are you going to do to achieve that goal? You can write that on your notebook. Do this for 10 minutes. Okay, don't worry, this is only a proposal. There is no wrong there is no wrong answer. Okay, very good guess. Do you have any other questions? None? What is an exercise program? Let's have a recap. Very good class. Okay, what do you think will be the benefits of having an exercise program to your health? Okay, that's good. Do you think you are going to create more exercise program to improve your health? Okay, some of you yes, some of you are no. Okay, it is it depends on your health status as of the moment. Very good. If you have more questions regarding with our lesson, you can contact me on my Facebook account, Carmela Dolientas Escaño, and then I will answer your questions right away. That's all for today. Yes, that's all for today. My name is Carmela and have a great day. Goodbye.